get that cleared out, we can't slow down the furnace feed. Inside the furnace, superheated air blasts the coke, generating carbon monoxide. This strips oxygen from the falling ore. The furnace tender must periodically reverse the gas flow, utilizing the regenerative system to preheat the air. How's the acid holding up, Charlie? Right at seven. Keep the line moving. Look at that chart there. It's cooling exactly as planned. Aye, the work hardening effects are reversing nicely. The revolutionary flotation process used chemicals to make the copper hydrophobic. Workers then skimmed the resulting froth. Here we see the raw copper cathodes being stripped by hand before being charged into the massive reverberatory furnace for melting. The mandrel pierces the glowing billet, followed by the hydraulic ram forcing the copper through the die, creating the impressive 87-foot tube. Careful with the finned helix boys. This design wraps tight around the compressor cylinder, see? The mixture is heated to 2,300 degrees Fahrenheit until fully liquefied, creating the enamel base material. Through the tireless rotation of the mills, the raw frit is pulverized, then sifted through the 200 mesh screen. 
The ground frit is mixed with water and kaolin clay. The moisture is dropping well in this stack. Yes, they should be ready for transport soon. Keep it under the surface. Watch the steam, bring the next weight over here. Here we see the cork's waste being granulated. Successive grinders break down the material. Bring up the next skip. Careful now, watch the flow on the far side. Draw bench operation transforms the 8mm copper rod, pulling it through a series of dies to create the fine wire needed for motor windings. Intermediate annealing in a protective nitrogen atmosphere. The wire is heated to 750 degrees Fahrenheit. The electric seam welder utilizes rotating discs to forge a continuous, airtight seam. Here we see the forged steel taking shape, milled with utmost precision before the critical hardening process. This breakthrough, awarded to Steenstrup, revolutionized refrigeration.
temperature-sensitive element, the coiled bimetallic strip, is carefully calibrated for a range of 38 to 42 degrees Fahrenheit. Quality looks good on this batch. Observe the precision of the stamping work. These spring steel components are formed and blanked, creating the reliable door closure hardware of the age. Introduced the same year as the iconic monitor top in 1927, these handles begin as molten zinc before the precise work of the machine shop. Depositing a bright finish at 0.001 inch per hour, with the chrome emerging commercially the same year as the monitor top, 1927. The heavy gauge wire is straightened and cut before the automatic bending machines form the frames. Here we see the water rinsing operations. The pH is carefully monitored to ensure complete neutralization. The steel is immersed in 7% sulfuric acid at 167 degrees Fahrenheit, preparing the surface for the enamel bond. Multiple clean water rinses remove the residue. The parts are then thoroughly dried with forced hot air. In the drying room, the ground coat is prepared for firing. The water evaporates. Here we see the vital ground coat inspection. The enameled liner is carefully lowered, ensuring the crucial insulation cavity is maintained before the seams are expertly caulked. The final stage of assembly ensures the cabinet is fully insulated and sealed against the elements. The complete door assembly is processed through the alkaline clean, pickle, and nickel flash sequence, ensuring a matching porcelain finish. The intense heat allows the BCUP alloy to flow, creating a perfect, permanent seal for the refrigerant circuit. The defrost coil is carefully wrapped around the plate, ensuring maximum thermal transfer. Then the connections are secured.
the system undergoes deep vacuation, removing harmful moisture and air. By comparing the measured resistance to the factory specifications, we can verify the electrical integrity of the motor windings. The high voltage megometer is applied between the windings and ground. A minimum of two mega resistance is required. Here we see the 110 volt operation test. The amperage must hold steady between 2.2 and 4.3 amps for the US models.